next equation that we're going to be deriving is going to be the geopotential height equation. And essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what the gravitational potential energy of an air parcel is uh, when it's above the surface. And it's not simply the uh, GDZ that you normally think of in terms of gravitational potential height because gravity is not a constant. So we're going to take that into account because the motion in the atmosphere is very dependent on the fact that we get the potential energy of the air parcel uh, as close to 100% uh, accurate as possible. <clears throat> so we're going to begin with the hydrostatic equation, which if you remember from the last lecture, is dp by dz is minus the density times gravity. And we'll fold something in from the first lecture in that we defined the density as being one over the specific volume, or the inverse density. And if we take this and put it into the equation, we have minus alpha, which is the specific volume, times dp is equal to gdz. And gdz you might recognize uh, as potential energy, gravitational potential energy. And we're going to define this gdz as d phi, where d phi is the gravitational potential energy. <clears throat> and under this scenario, the work necessary to lift a unit mass of one kilometer from sea level to a height of uh, z is going to be the integral of gravity, which is no longer constant in this construct, times dz integrated from sea level all the way up to some height. And we're going to define the work required to lift that air parcel up to that height as the geopotential. Um, and that's how we define that. Some people call that the geopotential energy, but we usually just short that to geopotential. And then we can translate that into the geopotential height, um, and that's defined as the actual geopotential, or the potential energy, divided by the uh, gravity at sea level, which is a constant, and by doing that, you then get 1 over g naught is equal or times the integral of g dz from 0 to the height above sea level. And in this case, g naught is a constant 9.81 meters per second squared. So what's the difference between geopotential height and actual height? So <clears throat> what we've done is we've actually redefined the height coordinate. So if you were to lift an air parcel from the ground and move it up to one kilometer, and the physics one, you would just say that the gravitational potential energy of that air parcel is gravity at the surface times that height. Uh, but gravity changes with height. And so what we've actually done is we've actually taken a more accurate view of the gravitational potential energy and folded that in to a redefinition of the height. So if we lift an air parcel to one kilometer and we assume the constant gravity, uh, then the gravitational potential energy would be an error. So what we do is we like to assume that we have a constant gravity and adjust the height so that the gravitational potential energy will then be correct. And that height adjustment is done through the geopotential equation. Um, so from now on, when we start talking about height in the atmosphere, I'm no longer going to be referring to the actual height of an air parcel above the surface. I'm always going to be referring to the geopotential height because we have now redefined the vertical axis so that an air parcel that's moving upward or downward, we can have an accurate accounting of the gravitational potential energy of that air parcel. And so in this case, we have used the hydrostatic equation um, and a few definitions to define the geopotential, which is the gravitational potential energy, and a new height coordinate system of the geopotential height. <clears throat>